Sure. So again, this is Maksu Ali Mugal. Uh, by profession, I'm a professor. I teach at a private school uh, over Wooster in Massachusetts states. Uh, it's called Wooster Polytechnic Institute, and I'm assistant teaching professor within. I've been associated with them for the last three years. I usually teach uh, electric circuit design and digital circuit design courses over there. I do supervise some MQPs, what we call in subcontinent uh, final projects or senior design projects, or sometimes we also refer to as uh, uh, capstone projects. And I do a little bit of administrative stuff, uh, uh, you know, updating courses and preparing department for ABET accreditations and things like that. And as my hobby, I do create videos. Anything I do, I try to make videos and I put it on my YouTube. So I, I, I want to reach to a you know, global audience and help them in any way I can, uh, making things simple and easy with step-by-step -step instructions. So um, yeah, I started my YouTube channel roughly about 15 months ago. And now I have roughly around 1,300 subscribers. So uh, I didn't expect that when I started. Uh, last year but it's been it's to a point now when I wake up early in the morning and I look at my gmail I usually have like 20-25 emails every day now so I'm getting busy now <laughs> So I have been uh, fascinated about, so I'm a climate uh, science guy also. I, I did a lot of research related to climate. So I believe in climate change and global warming. So uh, the goal of that project is to basically measure the environment of pollution in the stratosphere. Uh, there are some harmful gases which indirectly uh, affects us, affects the temperature on our planet. So the goal is to send some electronics with some sensors uh, that can measure greenhouse gas emissions, including carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, uh, nitrogen oxide, uh, ozone uh, concentrations. And then we want to do this over a period of a long time, say next 10 years, 15 years. And we want to see the difference, like whether human activities on planet are affecting the climate change or not. There are scientific facts, but we just want to, you know, have the data for a long period of time. And then, so that's what the goal is. And in doing so, we also want to have these undergraduate students involved in STEM, STEM education, research. And then every time we do, we basically add a new feature to this project. So this year, we were basically wirelessly getting the data throughout the entire duration of the flight. We were getting real-time concentration data. And also, so the next next launch is going to be somewhere around March in spring, and then we plan to do uh, real time video uh, in that. And our hope would be to basically provide our audience a link where they could go and watch the you know as it goes up in the air, watch the video live. Yeah. Uh, we have been lucky that most of our attempts have been successful, but I remember a couple of times in the last few years, we our sensors didn't work, and uh, we ended up basically collecting nothing. One time, it ended it landed on a tree, so we had to cut the tree to retrieve the payload, and it was in no man's land. We really had to, we had a team of like 10, 15 people looking for it, searching for it, and we eventually found it. Had to cut the tree and retrieve the payload, so. It's it can easily go wrong, but there's a lot of prep that you need to do. You got a bunch of GPS inside and then trackers. Um, and then you have to make sure that the weather is okay, wind speeds, wind currents. Um, one time it actually, we did the launch in New York. It ended in the Atlantic Ocean. There were strong winds and it just dragged them back into the Atlantic Ocean. And unfortunately that was a time when uh, the COVID was evolving. And so they were, Usually they would have at the Boston Harbor area, they would have like ships and boats, they would give you a ride, but we could not do that. So we actually, we kept getting notification. Now it's somewhere in Europe, I think. Sure. So uh, I basically have three components to my channel. The first component is a lecture series in which I just uh, go through thorough uh, and thorough deep concepts uh, engineering principles, talk about electric circuits, for example. It's, it's an introductory course for any kind of engineer, whether it be it electrical, mechanical, civil. 
and then also digital circuit design. Uh, I also want to do some other courses. Right now, I only have like two lecture series. One is on electric circuit. The other one is on data electronics. But I do plan on doing microcontrollers and PLCs also. The second component of my channel is electronics projects. So um, using Arduinos or Raspberry Pis or TI Launchpad, students can make up basic to intermediate to advanced level projects that they, they can use basically in your classroom projects or even in fact some of them are so advanced that they can be taken up as a final project for the engineering uh, education the final year project and the third component is basically simulation and what i do i use state-of-the-art softwares uh, which are freely available uh, things like matlab or tinkercad um, lab view and things like that. And I do simulation and how to, you know, those who don't have the money or have resources to put together something and make a prototype, they can do simulation. And I usually try to use software which are freely available. You don't have to pay for it or pay a subscription fee, they are free. And then you can learn that way. So these are the three major components um, but over the period of time, I've added a little bit of more, but these are the three major core component of my YouTube channel. Yeah, so it's basically anyone who is an electrical or computer engineer, it's for those. So my audience is a little narrow, but I want to excite um, high schoolers, basically. So those who are in 11th grade, 12th grade, looking at the videos, they would know exactly what they're going to be doing next four years of their life if they choose to be an engineer. Yeah. So um, right now, everybody wants to be a YouTuber, right? Because it can generate a decent amount of revenue. When I started last 15 months, like 15 months ago, I, I didn't have that in my mind that I, I'm going to do it to generate revenue. I just wanted to do everything that I do, every hard work that I'm doing, I just wanted to put it out there and be available, okay? But like I said, you know, now, you know, there's so much traffic coming in I'm now getting serious about it. Okay, now this is getting serious. So I was looking for, okay, how do you make money or how do you, I don't get too many views. Like for example, if someone is a YouTuber and he talk about any global issue or current issues to so say uh, US presidency, they will get 50,000 views right away overnight, right? I don't get that many number of views because my audience is narrow and then you know, it's a new channel. It's it's building up. I'm building up my audience right now. So there were ways, you know, how you can, you know, have an appealing video. And the first thing everybody talks about is thumbnail. Having a good thumbnail makes a lot of difference. And I have I've done it, and I've actually experienced that. You know, if you when you upload a video, uh, YouTube the way their you know technology works, it automatically chooses a thumbnail for you. Okay, uh, we. You can experiment that. Upload a video with the with the thumbnail, which was automatically chosen by YouTube, and then uh, you know, upload a video with a to the good looking thumbnail. You'll notice you'll get more views on the one with a good thumbnail versus the one with the you know regular thumbnail. So I've been using PicMaker for almost like ever since I started my YouTube channel, uh, and. Uh, there, I was basically looking for it online. I did not, it was not referred or someone did not recommend me. I just find it online. And I was not initially not using just PicMaker. There were a few others. I don't remember their name but now, but one of the reason I chose PicMaker and I've been consistently using it is because there were no signups, like no long pages or, you know, ads or, and subscription fees and things like that. Was the layout of the website was very easy to navigate. Anybody can use it. Literally a kid can use PicMaker. The graphical layout is so easy to understand. You just pick a wallpaper, put your text, use icons if you need, uh, well, different kind of wallpaper they have, and you're good. Uh, change the resolution you like, and now they have like pre, um, what do you call it, pre-selected thumbnails option yeah, now. Yeah, templates, yeah. You don't have to do that. You just pick your Instagram, thumbnail or YouTube thumbnail and then you're good. So that's the reason I chose it. And then the filter effects, you know, everybody wants to have like bright colors and things like that. So you, uh, there's a bunch of themes on PicMaker now, cool summer and things like that, which I really use. And it has, uh, I actually, you know, have had people asking me like, how do you create these thumbnails? Yeah. 
And I, I told them like, I've been using Pickmakers and in some of my, you know, videos, you'll see I have basically credited Pickmakers too. Absolutely, uh, you know, there is tremendous amount of editing that goes into video. You know, people see this couple of minutes video, but there's hours and hours long editing. I have optimized my process such that I don't have to worry about my thumbnails. I don't have to worry about putting any graphic or uh, stitching up uh, pics and stuff like that. I can, I have my own templates that I have saved in my dashboard on PicMaker. I know exactly what to pick, what colors, themes I need to go with. It's so easy with PicMaker uh, and uh, it just saves me time. That's another reason I use PicMaker is because I don't want to spend too much of time editing. I want to make spend time thinking about what is going to be my next video. So um, it, it's great. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, it, it definitely, uh, it's, it's better than a lot more websites out there in the market. So oh, I like the, uh, the, the background um, colors, the, the gradient one, the, the, their color scheme. I think it's, I can just, uh, sometimes I even, in fact, uh, you know, I get confused in a way which one to pick because everything, every color combination looks so appealing, you know. But I, uh, if you look at my YouTube channel, you see I have gone with some kind of theme. So for one component, electronic projects, there's a specific theme. All my thumbnails have a specific theme color combination because I want to differentiate my videos. Okay, this is electronic projects. This is simulation. This is lecture series. So uh, that is very easy, uh, that part. Secondly, the icons. The icon, like YouTube icons, you know, uh, Instagram icons and, and things like that. Third, the filter. I really love the filter, and it has the uh, and I can upload um, any any graphic, import it into PicMaker, and the good thing about it, it actually saves it. It actually saves it in Cache, I believe. So I don't necessarily have to, you know, download an image from a website and then upload it. It's already out um, out there in the archive, and I can just pull it anytime I need. So that is the great part. And plus, of course, I got 180 videos. So all my 180 thumbnails are saved. Uh, and again, you know, I don't have to pay anything. Uh, it's easy to access them. There's a search hike uh, window uh, where I can go and look up for any uh, any thumbnail. And if I want to reuse it or edit it, I just, with a, uh, just click it and it opens it. And then I can make those changes if I like. So these are the three, four features I really uh, love. But I've seen the PicMaker 2, which I'm going to start using now because that has a lot more features than PicMaker 1, right? Yes, th thank you for having me. It's a pleasure uh, being here with you. Thank you for your time. Uh, and, and that tells you about like how seriously you take your business. And uh, again, to your audience, this is not an arranged meeting. It just happened overnight. Uh, I was talking to Karthik and he was helping me fix, uh, you know, a couple of things. And then all of a sudden we had this nice conversation going on and we decided to meet and have a, uh, you can call it a formal chat, but it was very informally done. Um, so yeah, no, I am I'm, I'm totally, you know, uh, enjoying using PicMaker and I have loved conversation uh, with you guys. And I think I uh, had a conversation with your customer support uh, in the past also. Uh, very responsive uh, and that's what all we need you know as users uh, and like I said you know I want to spend more time making videos than editing and then doing a lot of editing in PicMaker has helped me and that includes you know uh, cropping pictures putting them together creating making thumbnails using you know pre-selected themes and color combination and that that's really helpful uh, and then, you know, does not take too much to download, just downloads right away, a few kilobytes, uh, very easy, yeah.